Good morning. How are you today? Well, it's overcast, but it's it's kind of comfortable warm. So uh, it's a good day. Happy New Year. We're getting closer still. Another day. Uh, I hope you're not going to parties. I understand the impulse. And there's this uh, mirage that things are like they were. If we saw a familiar person, we could walk over to them and embrace each other and talk and uh, speak uh, tongue to ear and nothing would happen. But that's just not the case. That's just not where we are. We're in a dangerous place and uh, nobody really can tell us how dangerous because we're still gathering the data to tell us. It's not about incompetence, it's about uh, data points, if you will. And in this category of protecting ourselves, uh, President Biden, as you know, and his uh, defense secretary, Austin, provided that uh, people had to be vaccinated or they had to be tested once a week. And a number of them uh, in the National Guard are refusing that. The standing forces, you know, Army, Air Force and so forth, their numbers are very good. But the National Guard has a greater number of people who are protesting. And the uh, governor of Iowa, he decided that the National Guard shouldn't have to uh, pledge to be vaccinated and be vaccinated or to be tested once a week and has taken it to the court. Well, the district court uh, considered the matter and it said, wait a second, they already take nine other vaccines. They have to take this one and citing the defense secretary, preparedness and being ready for emergencies is absolutely necessary for the armed services. Now, the National Guard has uh, come a tricky way since the origin of the country. Originally, in the Second Amendment, you'll notice, it talks about a militia and uh, having arms for a militia. But the militia gradually became more and more uh, bureaucratized, if you will, and went from being a local militia to a state uh, force to being absorbed into the army. And so it's in a different place. And the National Guard, therefore, has to respond both to the president and to the governor of the state. The governor of the state was trying to say, well, the federal government can't tell us what to do. And this judge, in an exhaustive opinion, said, oh, yeah, they can. I think this case can be viewed differently because it involves the armed services than, say, uh, referring to OSHA, Occupational Safety uh, Hazard Act, uh, I don't know if it's hazard or health, and uh, in the sense that that has conditions for people in the workplace, that is the dispute over employers who have more than 100 employees. So I don't think those distinctions should matter, but it's something a court could do if it was leaning to protect business as opposed to the armed services. I don't know if they'll try to make that distinction. I think it's a false distinction if uh, we're doing anything that compromises the health of people who come in contact with others. But there we have it. Uh, a good example of what it's costing us by not having everybody vaccinated and boosted is a fella, uh, Dale Weeks, I believe his name is. And he's in a situation in which uh, he is in Iowa. Uh, actually, the governor was Arkansas and this fella is in Iowa. And the situation in Iowa, 78 years old, and he had been vaccinated and he had received his booster and uh, he contracted a sepsis. I don't know if you know what that is, but it can be very dangerous and there's not one brand. And so you have to have it cultured carefully to identify it. And I know because I almost lost Holly to sepsis, my wife. Uh, and it took, it took some while and we went from one <laughs> In Northern Virginia to another that had some specialty and my sister-in-law who's an internist and my brother-in-law who's a pharmacist we sort of formed a team and we uh, we reviewed the numbers and I was kind of the advocate for our team to the doctors and I believe that if you don't have an advocate for you when you go to the hospital for almost anything you're making a mistake and luckily we had an elaborate operation well this man uh, is, a, is an intelligent man, but he couldn't get a bed and he couldn't get moved from the local hospital to a bigger hospital. And the reason was there was such a pressure on the hospital to give up beds to 
people who had the coronavirus who had never been vaccinated and who had not received any booster shots. Now, I happen to think if you're going to do a triage these days, if a person has been vaccinated and had a booster shot, then uh, they, sh they should get beds. But going down the list, we should not be allowed, as happened here, a man of 78 to die because we couldn't get him the proper medical advice and tests to determine what the sepsis was and to save his life. And so he's dead at 78. Uh, this is an example of the cost to America of this stupid uh, political game to convince people that uh, it's a hoax, you know. And, and the, the survivors of the families, they still insist on not getting the necessary vaccinations or booster shots. Uh, I, I guess I've seen some strange things in my life, but I, I've never seen people so intent on risking their lives and the lives of their families and people they don't know. And, and then to hear nurses across the country also resisting this. When we have so many data points now, we know that it really makes a difference for the better. And uh, let's turn to the other issue that we often talk about, which has me baffled why the Democrats, who, who've had to fight to get elected, don't see what the issue should be. And the issue should be two things. One, we shouldn't be fighting among ourselves. The enemy are, is the Republicans. And spending our time on Manchin takes our time away from identifying the Republicans as a do-nothing do uh, group of people with extreme views who are autocrats. So talking about Manchin doesn't help us win that argument, and we're moving into the midterms. And what should the issues be? We have a national stage to choose issues, and they're not voting rights, they're not racial injustice, they're not about the insurrection. What is wrong with us? Now, Trump is asking the Supreme Court to deny to the uh, January 6th Select Committee uh, those documents that he asserts a privilege, but that the lower courts have all decided uh, are up to Biden, that is, the current president, not a past president. And uh, so th those documents are likely to go to the committee, but it tells us something about how Trump tries to avoid responsibility. And since we know there's not infinite time ahead of us, and Trump's argument is that committee is talking about referring matters for a criminal prosecution, well, damn it, do that. Do exactly that, you know? Trump is basically telling us, don't throw me in that briar patch. Well, do. Throw him in that briar patch. Do this right. Make It is a criminal prosecution. And the lack of an accounting, we all feel, is a failure politically by Democrats. And consider the fact that we just heard the U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York praise how not fear or favor we go after people we did Ghislaine Maxwell. Well, come on. How dangerous was it to go after her? What was her political strength? She's accused of, you know, being a predator to minors with Jeffrey Epstein that may have been killed because of who else was on his list who, uh, who does the same thing. So if it's really so important to chase her, then chase Trump, chase Giuliani, chase those people who are in the inner circle that would destroy our government, who believe in autocracy and who don't believe in democracy. So that's, uh, that's kind of what's on my mind today. And as you can see, it's beautiful out. The trees, I miss the leaves, but there's something special about the barrenness of the winter. It takes us back to our roots, and we spend the year from this point on gathering life, gathering light. The question is, will we do that politically? And I have my doubts. And I think if we're not shouting and screaming at them, we don't have a chance. So rest your lungs and prepare for the fight in the new year. In the meantime, just have fun and relax. Talk to you. Bye-bye.